I know you? Oh, new recruit, right? Don't move. Neil, the diverticulitis in two hasn't gone upstairs yet. We need that room. Doc Clark has been looking all over for you. Hold on a minute. McGuigan. No, not a chance. We're short tonight. Don't go anywhere. Doc's on his way. He'll show you the ropes. But first, let me give you the most important piece of advice you're going to get around here. If you really want to succeed at Legacy Memorial, be very, very nice to the nurses. Hey, I've been waiting for you. I'm Matt Clark. This is Nurse Julia Henderson. Hi. Welcome to Legacy Memorial. I should get back to work. See you around. Thanks for babysitting, Carol. Busy? Oh, full house as usual. Well, let's not waste any more time. I'm an attending physician here in the emergency department. Each attending is assigned a resident to supervise, and you're my assignment. I'll be evaluating your work throughout your time here and reporting your progress to the chief of staff. And don't worry, I'll keep you informed of my conclusions. Now, I know you've spent a lot of time preparing yourself for this stage of your medical training, and I don't think you'll be disappointed matching here. Unfortunately, you've come at a time when uh, our residency program is battling to keep our accreditation. We've had some residents of questionable character coming through here, and because of their poor ethical choices in treating patients, this hospital and staff were put on probation by the Accreditation Council. So you know, if, if it seems like we're being like, extra cautious around here, we are. Just, just be careful and, and be thoughtful, because your, your decisions and your choices within the various shifts could determine whether we still have a residency program, without which this hospital will surely close. I'm, I'm kind of sentimental about the place I did my entire training here, so I just like to keep that from happening. We're depending on you. Enough pressure for one day? Nah. How about we get started? You'll begin each shift here at the nurse's station. This is where we keep pending cases. Sometimes a nurse will fill you in on patients waiting to be seen, but since the cutbacks were severely understaffed, so other times you're going to be on your own. Each patient has a clipboard pertaining to his or her case. Carefully review the information. Let's see what we got. Ah, dog bite victim. Great place to start. Once you familiarize yourself with the patient's chart, you're going to want to check the research computer for treatment ideas. Let's take our dog bite patient. And to make life easier for yourself, you can download the information from the desktop onto your handheld computer. There's two trauma bays for critical patients. Our dog bite patient isn't critical, so we're going to see her in uh, treatment room one. Follow me. Finally, real life doctors, like I had forever to wait or something. Regina, I'm Dr. Clark. This is one of our new residents. I, I hear you've been having a tough day. You want to tell me what happened? Gladly. I go out to my car, and this little land shark comes at me like I'm dinner. And I had told my neighbors a hundred times, do not let that dog off its leash. And they're like, well, it's just like this itsy bitsy chihuahua. And I'm like, I don't care if it's a gerbil. I want it exterminated. Were you bitten anywhere else? What, like the arm isn't good enough for you, or what? Yeah, Regina, I'm going to turn this examination over to my colleague. You'll be in good hands. Refer back to your notes if you have to. Any tools you need are located on your tray, so I'll be checking back with you soon. Well, let's say it looks like it's just you and me. How's everything going here? Oh, well, we're having a party. How do you think everything is going? One thing I didn't mention, keep alert for critical cases. They can show up anytime, even if you're in the middle of treating someone. At that point, you've got to decide whether to stabilize and leave your patient for the incoming trauma or you know, keep on treating the first one. What? Excuse me, no one's leaving until we're finished here? No, no, no one's going anywhere. Okay. When you're all finished, you pick up your patient's chart. You fill out the hospital orders, discharge orders, and your diagnosis. And when you're finished with that, sign the bottom of the chart. I'll be back when you're done.
How you feeling? Next time I want you to treat me and not some student doctor. I'm sorry you feel that way, but... Your doc did a beautiful job. Good. Excellent. As good as any plastic surgeon. Hey, would either of you like to be a witness for the prosecution when my dog bite lawsuit comes to trial? Okay, you're on your own now. Just remember everything I told you. Don't forget to refer back to your notes. Grab another case off the rack. I'll see you soon. Oh, and remember, keep alert for the critical cases. Come on, come on. We're packed. Some of these folks have been waiting for hours. Pick a case and let's get going. The little guy's John Cho. This morning he had a sudden onset of vomiting, closely followed by a weakness in his hands and feet. And pain in his stomach. Episodic abdominal pain over several weeks. Plus, he's been in a very bad mood. Grumpy, sleepy. Pressure's normal at 100 over 58. Respiration's 20. The kid doesn't seem to be that sick, but the neuro exam may be a little off. The neighbor told me that Mom here leaves John home alone while she works. The apartment's pigsty. Dirty. Paint peeling. I made a mistake calling for them to take my boy. We came to this country for a better life, for freedom. Everything I do is for my son, to make life better for him. Right now, I can't afford babysitter because I'm saving up my money to send for my mother to come here to help care for him. I guess all that no longer matters, does it? Thanks for your help, Doctor. I take better care of things in the apartment. Promise. I never knew that feeling faint was bad for you. No one can afford paint on the wall where we come from. Whatever it costs, from now on, I make sure to have someone look after John while I'm working. You are right to trust me. You will see. Let me guess. You just finished your first shift, right? I can always tell. You got that look, like a raccoon caught in the headlights. Seen it a hundred times. Don't worry, your shifts are only going to get harder. <laughs> Why don't you relax in the break room? Take a nap, have a snack. You'll be sorry if you don't. Next shift will begin before you know it. Be very cautious with the Java around here. I was just going over the charts for your first shift, particularly John Chu, the lead poisoning case. Yeah, I, you know, you're new here, so I, I can appreciate your, uh, your enthusiasm, but calling in social services to take a child from the home is it's a serious move. In this case, I, I don't see how you can claim parental neglect without previous reports or documentation of neglect. I mean, I think the move to make would have been to have a public health worker you know, pay the family a visit so they can assist in making the home a, a safer place to live for the little boy. So you know, just be more careful next time. Think things through, okay? Get some sleep before your next shift. You'll need it. Oh, and uh, make a fresh pot of coffee, would you? Very careful of the Java around here. It's so I was just going over the charts for your first shift, particularly John Chu, that lead poisoning case. Yeah. Excellent work. Some of our more uh, over-enthusiastic doctors 
might have been aggressive with Lian Chu, maybe calling in social services about the safety of the boy, but uh, you saw there were no previous reports of neglect and that the mom meant well by her son. What I am going to do is uh, send a public health worker over to visit them. They'll help the mom clean up the place, you know, make it safe for her kid to live. So, good. Get some sleep before your next shift. You'll need it. Oh, and uh, make a fresh pot of coffee, would you? Right. You are... don't remember the name. Another first year, right? Welcome. I don't know what you've heard about the residency program here at Legacy, but whatever it was, forget it. As far as I'm concerned, we're starting this year with a fresh slate. That means we expect much more from our residents than we have in the past. My aim is to make this one of the toughest, strictest, and most respected programs in this country. Spit out some damn good doctors in the process. We're becoming very hands-on with our new residents. I personally will be reviewing all of your work. And I can promise you, I don't miss a thing. It was nice and quiet around here till about five minutes ago. Hope you bought an extra pair of scrubs. Don't give her any more Tylenol. Good. Just wait a little while. Call back if it doesn't go down. Yeah. The woman in room one, real jitterbug. Don't need to be a doctor to know she's on something. What? I said no more Tylenol. Right. Oh, God. like a year ago is my problem and um, I mean I swear I don't do it anymore okay oh I don't do it anymore but do you think like in some way this could be like a residual effect from my past habits oh ah! I thought seeing a doctor was supposed to improve my health is there any way the rest of my stay here can be a little less dangerous? Okay? I almost bought the big one this time, huh? Must be God's way of telling me it's time to grow up. Look, I put in a call that cost it to Betty Ford. See if they'll have me back once I get out of this place. <sighs> Look, I'm sorry I lied to you, Doc. It's another one of my bad habits. I'm going to make it up to you. Tickets to a really good show this weekend. And backstage passes, too. Okay? <sighs> <sighs> Work around children, I always seem to get these darn flu bugs. Younger teachers never miss a day. Seem to have better resistance. And I, I've used up all my sick pay. I can't afford this. Not now. Please, not now. <coughs> I don't ever remember feeling this bad. I came here because I couldn't afford a private hospital. But I still expect the same level of competency. 
I've got your name, Doctor. I'll be mentioning this to your superiors. Pneumonia. Two weeks bed rested. What about my work? I barely have enough money to buy shampoo. Listen to me feeling sorry for myself. I'll get by. I always do. You may think I'm not grateful, but I am. You did a wonderful job, Doctor. Really. Hi. Uh, you must be new. I'm Monty Rodriguez. Um, it's my back, Doctor. It's the worst pain I've ever had. See, I've just been elevated to senior fry cook, and what with my new responsibilities and the accompanying stress, I've been a little preoccupied, so I wasn't looking when an obese garden gnome of a man in a brown hat took an umbrella and prodded me in the back with it. Without provocation, I might add. You know, I am certain that I'm going to need some countless x-rays and an ultrasound. Maybe even surgery. Um, before you start, do you mind sending in the nurse with a food tray? You're a rookie. It's fine. I know how it is. I started in the bottom myself. But I got where I am today by affording customers with fast, friendly, and courteous service from the minute they walk up to the counter until they leave the building. Tell you what, I'll keep your subpar performance between us if you don't have me a couple cranberry juice cocktails to go. <laughs> Are you sure? You couldn't find anything wrong? Hmm. Probably just a sprain then. <laughs> I love the applesauce in these little cups. Mm. <laughs> it keeps it from um, touching the filet. <laughs> um, well, thank you for taking such good care of me. I'll put in a good word for you with my friends at Triage. Doctor, we're getting a motorcycle rollover pretty serious. Should I let them know you're coming? Motorcycle on the Tennessee freeway where he hit some slick road, rode him multiple times. He's complaining of I sharp, sharp pain. Like for him, he had his helmet on. BC hey, is one dude, I'm hurting here. Twenty wrestlers ah. to the twenty-eight. So I don't want to feel. I tell you, if they ever took these machines off the road, the spare man would be out of a job. There, that's the loser. The, the doctor is not the problem. You're the problem, John. I'm telling you, this doc's incompetent. He could have killed me. No, your idiot cycle almost did that. Funny. I hope you finally learned your lesson. I'm going to sell what's left of that death machine and, and put the money away for a nice trip to Provence. Just the two of us. Provence? Where's that? We'll talk about this later. Vince, this is that multi-talented doctor I was telling you about. John hasn't stopped raving about you. Well, I know he still has to go through surgery, but I must admit he looks pretty good for a guy who got tossed head first from an idiot cycle. Don't go there, Vin. Do you care that I was worried sick about you? 
I'm going to sell what's left of that death machine and put the money away for a nice trip to Provence. Just the two of us. Provence? Where's that? We'll talk about that later. Let's talk about it when I can breathe. Hey, I see you had a motorcycle injury. Femur. Ouch. You think a bad break like this will stop that patient from riding? Not a chance. We call them donor cycles around here, and you'll see a lot of these cases. Not just head injuries and broken bones, but road rash, eye trauma, carpal tunnel, ear injuries. You're 14 times more likely to die riding a motorcycle than you are in a car. Idiots. Oh, Matthew. Yeah. Security called. You need to move your motorcycle. You're parked in a handicap zone. Hi, how you doing? Bobby Silvers. Maybe you know me as Bobby Showtime Silvers, huh? <laughs> K-R-O-L, DJ. Well, anyway, you're probably asking yourself, what's up with a guy like me taking a reverse pike and tuck 15 feet off a stage at a Beck concert, huh? <laughs> I'm hosting the show, dude. I'm introducing the man himself, all right? I'm up there, I'm doing my intro rap. Right? And I'm doing it so well, by the way, that the band is behind me shooting dagger eyes into my back because the crowd is digging it so much. And the next thing you know, I'm crashing headfirst into the pit. <laughs> Ow! Ah. Yeah, my left leg, you know, up top, it's killing me. Yeah, and this neck pain won't go away. Look. I know I'm the idiot that fell off the stage, but uh, word of advice, from now on I'd stick to minor cuts and bruises, or they might catch on around here. You know as much about medicine as I do. Cool. Great job, Doc. Very artistic. Now, can you get me out of here so I can get home and rest up? I'm broadcasting from a new shopping mall tomorrow. We got a two-four rolling up. Third rail shock and bleeding from the same crime scene. We're gonna need you in there. Eighteen-year-old Marcus Bryan became the city latest robbery stat at the Pistol Line. Put up a fight. Laying on the third rail, pulling his assailant down with him. Some sane electrical injuries. LAPD pulled him up. We arrived five minutes later. The patient was pulseless and not breathing when we found him. <coughs> Thanks, Luke. We'll take a look. Legacy Memorial, that's right. Is this Mrs. Bryant? Is she there? Yeah, thanks. Poor kid. When you see someone cut down in the prime of life, senselessly, it makes you hate your job. But telling the family, that's the worst. Never tell them on the phone, though. Always in person. Ms. Bryant, this is Gabriel Gomez. I'm a nurse down at Legacy. Your uh, son's been in an accident. We need you to come down. Yes. Okay. I heard they took that robbery victim from you. That you didn't do such a good job on him. That makes us medics look really bad. Do me a favor. Be more careful next time. Man, I've never been more scared in my life. <laughs> the low life went after me for three dollars. <laughs> All the business people on the train, he picks the dirt poor freshmen. Now, I don't remember much after the fall, thankfully. They tell me it was touch and go there for a while, but that you saved my life. I was having trouble deciding on what to major in school, Doc. But now I know. I'll start pre-med as soon as I'm well. Be 
Reggie Alvarez. He's the perpetrator of the crime whose outcome you've just seen. Reggie and his victim took a spill onto the third rail. He's bleeding out from his left leg. BP 100 over 50, pulse 40, respiration shallow. Gee, I just love helping the bad guys. So, you lost the patient. Which, by the way, he presented never should have happened. I hope for your sake you took good notes because I'm sure the cheat's going to want a full inquiry. Now, Nurse Henderson's trying to contact the next of kin, and when she gets him, I want you to be the one who calls him. I'm taking this patient away from you before he bleeds out. I'm very disappointed in you. We'll talk about this after your shift. Hey, I heard you did some good work. Word travels fast around here. Pretty nasty character, too. I treated him when I was chief resident. Kid assaulted me when I tried to put in a central line. I guess I should have told you earlier, huh? Hey, Reggie, remember me? Yeah, get the dude to try to kill me. Charming as ever. Reggie, you know, you might want to thank the doctor here who saved your life. Thanks for nothing, chucklehead. It's patients like this who make the job so rewarding. Dr. Clark has informed us you lost a patient today. The nurses reported you weren't at all competent in that room. Frankly, I'm not sure you belong here at this hospital. But Dr. Clark feels that you should be given another chance. I can't say this board agrees. But given our trust in his opinion, we'll take his advice. Let's hope you live up to his belief in you. As you know, we have been battling to retain our accreditation. The council will have to receive this report. Let's just hope for your sake it doesn't ruin everything for us. Now go away. The first time I lost a patient, no one said anything to me. Not the attending, not the nurses, nothing. They just went on with whatever they had to do. I, I was lost. I, I, I had nowhere to put all that stuff. You know what I mean? It's always going to hurt losing a patient. You just get better at hiding it. Oh, good, the doctor's here. Don't embarrass me, please. She woke me up screaming. I wasn't screaming. The pain was horrible. You were the one screaming. Will you tell the doctor how you feel? They have plenty of other patients to see. What do you think I've been trying to do? All right, the pain started at her belly button, and then it moved much lower, and then she complained of nausea, and then... <sighs> oh, my God. What if she's pregnant? Oh, Mom! If I find oh. out you had sex with Anthony Scafello, we haven't even hardly had sex. Hardly? How do you hardly have sex? How can we if you're always showing up wherever we go? Will you deal with her, doctor? Right. No, you won't, honey. Don't worry, sweetie, okay? It's going to be fine. Oh, I know, honey. I'll be right here for you. Oh, just one second. I'll be right there, sweetheart. Look, I know that appendicitis isn't all that uncommon in kids, but that's still no reason for you to be so lax in your treatment of my daughter. Honestly. It's going to be fine, okay? I know, honey. Don't worry. I'm going to be here. Everything's going to be okay. All right. I love you. Just a second. Honey, I'll be right there, okay? Thank you, doctor. They're taking Emma up to surgery now. I'm just so happy that she's not pregnant. But deep in my heart, I know it's just a matter of time. <laughs> You'll see. 
At least the surgery will keep her away from Tony Scarpello for a few days. Do you think you could do me a favor? Would you mind talking to the surgeons and ask them if they could keep her here for a couple of extra weeks? <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Yuklovich, on the restrained driver and a head-on car versus concrete wall. That's killing me. Doctor is going to fix you right up. Where's Lisa? Is she okay? Hang in there. Complained of neck pain and pain to the left side of the chest and the right arm. 2CM lap to his left forehead. He doesn't remember any event, but denies he was in consciousness. He's in pretty good shape considering. The vehicle has severe PSI. Will someone tell me how Lisa's doing? The Lisa he's referring to is DOA. I knew it. I knew she was gone. Deep down, I just knew. I loved her so much. Everyone did. I killed her. I know that. So I don't care that you screwed up my treatment. I don't care what happens to me from now on. Because it should have been me that's dead. It should be me. I knew it. I knew she was gone. Deep down, I just knew. I loved her so much. Everyone did. I just don't know what to do next, you know? It's like I'm frozen. You did a great job fixing me up. But damn it, I wish you did it. You should have just let me die. You should have just let me die. take away my daughter. Are you happy? You're just doing this because we're poor and you think we can't fight back. You better watch your back, dog, because this isn't the last you'll hear from me. A lot of overkill with all those tests you were doing, wasn't it, Doc? No matter. Brenda's gonna be fine. I'll just have to be more careful where I put my things next time. He's back. Your good buddy, Monty. Says he has a headache, double vision. And asked if I would mind finding a portable TV for him to watch while he's in the exam room. Oh, and he requested you. Oh, you scared me. Don't look so down. It's better to find out sooner rather than later that you're not cut up for medicine. Hey, 
there's an opening for a junior fry cook at Mickey D's. Then we could see each other every day. scared me. Um, I was just, I would, have I mentioned what a great job you've just done? Um, you're going to be chief staff before you know it. Um, okay, see ya. I gotta run. One minute he was playing with his friends and the next he's on the ground. Needs fallen within an hour. I mean, I can't be expected to keep my eyes on him every minute. Boys will be boys, you know. What, what concerns us? Chris, would you like to play with your teddy bear? Here you go, dear. Yeah. What concerns us, doctor? Is that Chris is adopted? We know zero about his birth parents' medical history. With what's going on with him, that's just starting to scare us. You wouldn't be terribly offended if I sought out a second opinion. It's just, well, I don't agree with your diagnosis. My gut, my mother's intuition tells me so. Come on, Have a nice day, Doctor. Hemophilia? I can't believe it. You know what always frightened us in considering adoption? This Lack of control over what came before the child was even born. You hear all the horror stories. But the minute my husband and I laid our eyes on Chris, we knew that nothing in this world, nothing from his past, would stop us from laying down our lives for him. This hemophilia? minor bump in the road. Thanks for taking such good care of our son, Doctor. We just got a drowning. Eight years old, under for about five minutes. You better hurry. near drowning victim. He couldn't find his baseball. Five minutes I left him alone. Five minutes I went upstairs to find the baseball. You should have taken money with you. Yeah. He was eating his cereal, Roberto. He was floating, facing down. I pulled him out and then I saw his baseball was at the bottom of the pool. He wanted his baseball. Please. He's our only <laughs> grandchild. We, we raised him since he was two years old. Don't let him die. I want to be in the room with Manny. No, no, it, it won't be good for you. I, I, I go. Please, please. please. You, stay. you stay. We tried so hard to give Manny a good life. But what chance did he have with a mother like his? And now, just when he had the chance to live the life he deserved, we killed him. We killed our loving boy. I'm going to go and sit with him for a while. <laughs> I am just one man, not a rich man. In this country, I can do nothing to protect my grandson from people like you. But in the end, you will have to answer to him. 
and he knows no borders. Oh, doctor, we're so happy our man is much better. I thank God he guided us to you. Roberto and I will put you in our prayers. Bless you. You've made it to second year. Just. You still have plenty of room for improvement. I can't promise we'll be as generous in your next review. Try harder. Much harder. You've made it to second year. Excellent. Not all of the first years were as successful as you were, but that was to be expected. You should be very proud of yourself. Keep up the good work. I've just come off the road. Chattanooga, Baton Rouge, Memphis. I'm home a day when I reach for Elizabeth, you know, being in the mood. It was embarrassing, Doc. I could hardly perform. That ain't never happened before. Elizabeth's my 29 Gibson L, double O. Supposed to belong to Robert Johnson himself. But I can't play her now, Doc. My arms got this big, ugly thing on it. Hurts like hell. I got a tour coming up, and I'm, I'm starting to worry I ain't going to make it. Now I'm a shoot from the hip kind of fella, so I got to tell you. You ain't cut out for this line of work. If I were you, I'd reevaluate this calling you have before you hurt somebody. This one's for you, Doc, to show my gratitude. Well, I know it's going to take a little time. Oh, but I already feel an improvement. Check on that song. I hate L.A. It's a jungle, and it's crowded, and it's not even my stinking territory. I sell jewels. I came into town to see a client. Well, I'm not out of LAX and in the cab two minutes when we get robbed. These two guys broke a window and came at me with a knife. That's how I hurt my arm. Self-defense. They got away with most of the jewels, but not all. I did some quick thinking and uh, hid some. I swallowed four of them. Okay, maybe six of them. Maybe a couple of dozen. You think this is funny, right? First you treat me with absolute carelessness. Then you set me up for ridicule by making me sit on a cold toilet seat waiting for these damn jewels to come out on their own. I hope you're happy.
So let me get this straight. I sit in here until the jewels exit. You know what? I would have preferred surgery. But you did a great job, Doc. Very understanding. So tell me, it's not going to hurt too bad when they come out, is it? I'm not her mother. I'm Stacy's headmistress at Emerton Boarding School. The kids found her unconscious in her room, blood everywhere. I, I brought her myself. Maybe that was dumb. I didn't think to call 911. Diet pills. The girls take them to stay thin. Stacy had an empty bottle on her counter. She has an eating disorder. Please, please help her. This can't be happening. What do I tell the girls? What do I tell the parents? With a school full of teenagers, one can't be expected to keep track of everything they're into. It's not our fault. So those parents are hers. They never came to visit. Too busy traveling the world. Sure, they sent money, gifts. Stacy gave them away and opened. I'm afraid we all failed her, Doctor. All of us. I am totally stupid. I mean, it was an accident, all of those pills. I don't even remember the response. I know I have to gain weight. I'm just so stressed with school and everything. But I'll get it together. I promise. Really. I just started at this new school. And everything seems so easy for the other girls. I just can't. Something is wrong inside of my head. And I think different. I hate it. I want to be normal. Mrs. Connolly says that you're keeping me in the hospital. They're going to make me eat, aren't they? I don't want to. I feel so fat already. Joe Reese, after his dorm room caught fire, he jumped two stories landing on concrete. Burn injuries to his hands and arms. Before he lost consciousness, complained of leg and pelvic pain. He also went to have a lot of smoke. Open. BP 90 over 60, pulse 120, respiration to 26. Joey! So you're getting his dorm room administered out too. Where, where, where did they take my son? Sir? Oh. Sir? Joey, Joey, set, please, sir, help my sir. son, please. Wait, that's you in the trauma room. You have to promise to stand off to the side and let the doctor do his work. Fine, fine, just make him better. Okay. Well, your patient didn't make it. By the look of this chart, it could have been avoided. BP takes dive, respirations fall to six, pulse jumps, all signs that whatever you were doing wasn't working. Why didn't you call me or another attending? Rule number one, when you're in over your head, call for help. We're taking him upstairs to debreed his wounds and set his leg. He was in bad enough shape before you saw him. Now I have to fix your mistakes on top of his injuries. They've taken 
Joe to surgery now. Joe's not going to like it when he wakes up after they're finished with him. A hospital scare him since his mom passed. But if that's the worst of it, we're in good shape. He might even be running track again real soon. I'm very grateful to you, the staff, everyone. Matthew Bungle struck in the chest by a soccer bar during the game. I saw it, Mike. He was deliberately targeted. I can't, I can't breathe. Well, you hear that? He can't breathe. Is he going to be okay? You got to talk to the doctor. Shut, shut. I'm going in with you. I want to be my son. Dead. How could that, uh... He wasn't injured that badly, the game mask guy told me. This was a simple thing to take care of. Why didn't you tell me I could lose him? I want to be perfectly clear with you. First of all, I'm a lawyer. I'm a fierce animal, so you take this as a warning. If your incompetence has screwed with my kids' chances to play out this season, I'm going to be seeing you in court. Okay. Hmm? I want to have surgery. This is nothing. This is minor, okay? I'm going to be right outside. I'm not going to leave this hospital. Right, I promise you. Hey. He looks pretty good. My kid, thanks. They're going to open him up, uh, explore. Do they have to do that? I mean, wh what kind of recovery time are we talking post-surgery? You know, a couple days, a week? So what I'm trying to ask is, uh, is not going to take Matthew out for very long, is it? You know, because his, his team depends on him. You know, it's very important to him, soccer. It's very important. It's, it's his whole world. Finally. We've been waiting almost two hours. I told you this would happen in the county hospital. We had nowhere else to go. Annie, please, just be quiet. Will you please just hurry up and look at our son? He fell this morning. It's nothing serious, I'm sure, but he says it hurts, so... So it better be serious. I lost a whole day's work to come down here. He falls a lot. Boys do, I guess. Fall. Right, Colin? You had no right. Rafer, no. How dare you interfere with my family? You don't know anything about us. It's crazy. We would never even hurt Colin. Well, I am responsible for my family. Not you. Not this hospital. Colin is my own flesh and blood. Get your own life. Where have you taken him? We want our son back. Crazy damn liberals. See abuse and everything. Come on, Annie. Let's go talk to our lawyer. I told you it wasn't serious. I'm sorry I was so testy earlier. You know, the waiting around gets to you, and we're not used to the conditions here. But you did a great job, didn't he, Colin? Um, I had an back at him. Found him in the park gardens talking gibberish to a palm tree. No ID, nothing. I'm thinking PC. No, no, no PCP. Here's what we're going to need. Before Mosley goes to the morgue, I want a complete examination, top to bottom, showing there are no scratches on him. 
Now, I don't know what happened to him medically or why specifically he went south on you. But you saw we brought him here in good condition, right? Brought him in clean. He died clean. Comprende? We meet you at this number? Good, thank you. Thanks a lot. The cops were telling me that under your care, I was an accident waiting to happen. That you didn't know what you were doing and you were too arrogant to ask for assistance. The officers think I should have you investigated, you know? Pursue things? It's only because I want to forget that this day ever happened that I won't. My partner and I were very concerned for you, sir. You're lucky. Most cops would have figured you for an addict. You could have ended up in the tank overnight. Just goes to show not all the LAPD are bad guys. Isn't that right, doctor? The officers were uh, telling me how I was acting. <laughs> I'm so ashamed. I can't believe I was so stupid. Next time, I'll wear gloves when I'm handling pesticides. It's amazing you figured it all out. I'm lucky I had you as a doctor. Thanks. Hello, doctor. This is Pedro Mamami, known to most of us nurses as Pedro Le Pew for his thoughtful lack of hygiene. Pedro's in vomiting blood for. for qué tiempo ha estado vomitando? Qué tiempo, sí. Tres horas y una masa negra. Three hours. He says he's also vomiting some black stuff. How much do you drink, Pedro? ¿Qué cantidad de alcohol toma? No, 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 yo, yo, no, 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 yo no tomo mucho. Pedro. ¿Mm? Bueno, un cuarto de vodka. Quart of vodka a day. Uno por la mañanita y otro por la tardecita. Make that twice a day. It's all yours, Doc. Usted está loco, manténgase lejos de mí. Usted está loco. No, yo estoy más seguro en la calle. No, a mí no me quitan nada. You don't want to know, trust me. Cabrón. Ah, doctor, mire para usted. ¿Eh? Oye, eso no es tuyo. Eso es el doctor. You're the only level one that's not close to ER staff. She's Alice Frank, found mid seizure by her doorman, who told us Alice has had a cough, sore throat, low grade fever, and headache all day. Her BP is 92 over 50, pulse 140, respirations at 20. Her skin is warm and moist to the touch. This one's open. That was a bad one. Never gets any easier, the ones you lose, especially the young ones. Look, if you're worried about me not backing you up on this one, I tell it like I see it. Was it preventable? Probably. Doctor's error? I'm going to let you think about that. Next time you don't know how to do something, ask. It's better for the department, the patient, and my nerves. Great call. I've been here a long time, honey. And the job you did for that girl was a lot better than half the nitwits who come through here. You pulled her through. Congratulations. That is my fault. I killed my son. Calm down, Mr. Harris. You didn't kill anyone. Bill Harris, a strange driver in that car versus SUV we've been bringing in. Where's my family? They're here. He's having trouble breathing, chest pain, bruising all over his body. It took us ten minutes to extricate him from the car. I can't, I can't catch my breath. What's wrong with you, Matt? That didn't have to happen. If you're burning out, say something. 
Because you can't be making a habit out of this. You know what I mean? When I said kill me now, I didn't mean it. I never thought I'd be grateful to be going to surgery. I'm kind of waited out on you back there. I know I wasn't making the job any easier. It's just, it's my family. I thought I, I thought they were, you know. I hear you the doctor's taking care of them. So I guess they're in good hands, right? Hey, could you give me a minute with the doc? Sure. Hey, would you... Could you forget about what I was saying back there about falling asleep? Because now that I think about it, the whole thing was the other guy's fault. Really. Samantha Smith, unrestrained driver involved in that car versus SUV. Husband and daughter were both injured. Samantha hit her head on a windshield, losing consciousness for approximately one minute. Complaining of pain in her forehead, nausea, and dizziness. Threw up once in the ambulance, started on O2 just to be safe. Come on, doctor, you're not doing any good standing out here. Speed is everything with a head injury. Just what were you thinking? Because her head injury wasn't treated promptly and with great skill, Miss Smith could be left with permanent brain damage. Which, after watching your work, I'm not entirely sure you don't have. Well, she's in Neuro's hands now. They may have to open her up and evacuate the blood in there. By the way, Neuro did mention that they'd never seen a patient with these kinds of injuries looking so good coming out of the ER. Just thought you might want to know that. Harris, a strained passenger in a car versus SUV. Emma's complaining of pain in her left forearm. BP 100 over 58, pulse 88, respiration to 20. Her mom and dad were also in the vehicle. They don't look half as good as she does. Make it not hurt. You're so brave. Can you take her from here? I gotta go get the dad. Come on. Go, now. Can't you see she's scared of you? Go, I will stay with her and calm her down about you. It's just the poor little thing didn't have enough to worry about. Go. Well, doctor, you did it again. Emma's looking great. I can't say as much for her parents, though. Poor things. We'll be releasing Emma to her aunt. As soon as she gets here, we'll fill her in on your discharge orders. You've got a busy night tonight. Better get back to work. It's weird, huh? Me being a patient here. I had this respiratory flu that won't let go. <coughs> the past few days, it's gotten much worse. <coughs> this morning, I was coughing up some green mucus tinged with blood. <coughs> and I can hardly catch my breath. <coughs> what the heck's wrong with me, Doc? I'm so relieved. <coughs> I thought I was really sick, like something major, you know what I mean? So I'll take your advice. Take a couple of days off till this thing passes. You're the greatest. I'll see you soon. <coughs> 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 The pneumonia part I can handle, but the possibility I exposed my co-workers, my family to active TB, I owe you an apology. I had no idea I was contagious. Anyway, thanks for figuring out what was wrong with me before I infected anyone else.
About time, too. This is Gerald. I'm his mom. But by the way he's acting up today, I have a hard time believing he's any relation to me. Gerald, what's it? Get your little butt back in the seat. My stomach hurts. Well, why do you think we here? <laughs> he said his throat hurts, too. I didn't feel a fever, and he hasn't puked up lately. I just don't know what's wrong with him. You know, you better not be faking it just so you could stay out of school. Would you please help me find out what's up with him, Doc? Mama, I gotta go to the bathroom. You sure look fancy in those white robes and funny earphones you got around your neck. But I got your number, baby. I know what you're really about. No good. I don't ever want to see you around here again. You hear me? Come on, Gerald. Hmm. I thought we were robbed when I couldn't find this ring. My favorite, too. Floating around in his stomach with all that acid goo. Good thing it came out all right. I'd have killed that boy. <laughs> you are my knight in shining armor, Doctor. You really are. Come on. My so-called colleagues took me out for my birthday, which in itself is astonishing, as they usually have nothing to do with me. They're jealous. They love my... Ex ex expeditious ascent through the ranks of everyone's favorite global food service restaurant. Uh, I, can't, I, can't, I can't talk anymore. Uh, I feel terrible. My head, my back is in pain and I'm... <laughs> Doc, I'm sorry to say this, but I can't see you anymore. It's just not working out. You're too careless. I refuse to be your whipping boy any longer. You find some other poor slob to take your abuse. I'm moving on to better things. I'm going to surgery. Thanks, Carolyn. A good catch, Doc. I'm as stunned as you are about this. Why anyone would want to hurt me? Well, apparently my coworkers do. They're obviously not team players. I can't say that I mind all that much, because I'll have my own bed with clean sheets and a lovely nightgown. And, and I'll have to be here a couple days, at least. It's <laughs> grade school. Kids been throwing rocks at me and stuff. I can't help what I am. I don't do it on purpose. I just, uh, I never felt all feminine and, and girly. Me and Pam, we left the bar about 1 a.m. And uh, we were heading down Santa Monica toward Larrabee, away from Santa Monica toward Larrabee. And um, I 
I don't know where this car comes. It nearly runs us over, so we started running because they were coming back at us. And, and this, this guy, he just sticks his head out. And he, and he, I won't, he starts yelling. I'm not going to even tell you what he said. It was so disgusting. Next thing, I just heard a pop, and I felt this pain in my arm, and he shot me. I just can't believe he freaking shot me. <clears throat> so here I am. Decided to get out of this stupid town. I'm not safe on the streets. Worse off in the hospital. I'm going someplace safer. I'm going to New York City. Wow. My arm feels so much better. I guess maybe I will press charges because if I don't, those jerks, they're going to do it again and again, and I can't be responsible for that. It's got to stop sometime. It has just got to. How's my sleep? Our son, Mike. He was riding his bike in front of the house, and then somebody hit him, and then they ran off. Hey, boy, he passed out. He said his stomach hurt. It was all swollen. Do everything you can to save our boy. No Please. blood. What? Leviticus 17.10. The words of Jehovah himself. Absolutely no blood. Okay. You both have to stay out here. But I promise to keep you informed of your son's condition. have condemned our son to hell and eternal damnation. God commanded us to abstain from blood. Actually, God commanded to abstain from eating blood, if you want to be literal about it. He was talking about diet. Veins or mouth, it's the same thing. To take a dietary regulation and use it to deny a life-saving medical procedure to your dying son. In my eyes, that's murder. There is nothing that enters a man from the outside that can defile. But it is the things that come out of him those are the things that defile a man. I believe that's Mark 7.15. Have a nice day. It's hard, you know, faith. It's hard these days to be true to it. But I know, Mike, I mean, if you'd known what was happening, Mike would have agreed with our decision. Right, Homer? Mike devoted his life to Jehovah God as one of his witnesses. He respected the sanctity of life and blood. Oh, I miss him. Oh, I miss our boy. Oh, I feel so totally embarrassed. See, I own this store, the Bookworm. It's a big surprise, the bookstore. It's one of those mom and pop type deals, like when you've got mail. So, anyway, I decided to stay late and repaint because, well, basically I have no life. Well, guess what? I forgot to open the windows. Next thing I know, my clerk Abby's screaming to 911 that I've had a seizure. Oh my God! I've never even known anyone who's had one of those. I mean, that's really serious. I feel sort of okay now, though. Maybe a little queasy. A little nauseous. Maybe a tiny bit dizzy. Okay, so medicine's not your thing. What? No big? I mean, I'm the world's worst small business owner. That doesn't stop me from running a small business. Of course, I might not be the best example. We're bankrupt. Excuse me if 
with my gush, but you are, well, what a gift you have. <laughs> I'll be sure to come back here again next time something's wrong with me. You, my friend, have a customer for life. Started a couple of hours ago when I was opening up the restaurant. Sharpain made me short of breath. I think it's the rear mola. Ah, ow. Hey, but this is not your typical toothache. You know, I'm worried it might be infected or something for it to hurt so bad. I nearly passed out earlier. I figured you could call a dentist or something. Hey, look, I gotta take care of this now. Okay? I got a restaurant to run. People waiting on me. <sighs> Have Lenny help her clothes. Look, hire a sitter. I'll pay for it. Now, call your butt down to Legacy Memorial ER. Yeah. The doctors are loony to them. They don't know what they're doing around here. <coughs> And if you saw the way they practice medicine, you'd want to get the hell out, too. Hurry! Have Lenny help her close up. Let him hire a sitter. I'll pay for it. Gotta go. Un unbelievable. These things are supposed to happen to other people. Mom and Dad lived into their 90s. Proud, healthy stock. Heart attack. I feel like I'm letting my family down. Doc, I don't know whether to thank you or curse you for this diagnosis. I'm sorry, but that's how I feel. John Doe, gunshot wound in the chest. Anonymous call gave his location. More than likely some kind of gang retaliation. We just scooped and ran. It's not looking good, Doc. I've got security double in case some one of his gangster buddies comes in and tries to finish the job. Yeah, I just got the page. Ah, good. A chance to show me if you've improved. Well, let's go. <sighs> well, we lost him. The bullet tore up his atrium. Holes in the heart are always very, very difficult. That having been said, I'm very disappointed in your performance, Doctor. Your ineptitude is only exceeded by your lack of common sense, and I hope we never have the occasion to work together again. Well, we got him through surgery. Bullet tore through his atrium. Holes in the heart are always very difficult. He's one lucky kid. But you shouldn't look so pleased because you had absolutely nothing to do with our success, Doctor. Well, we got him through surgery. Bullet tore through his atrium. Holes in the heart are always very, very difficult. This is one lucky kid. Very impressive work, Doctor. Very impressive. Do you ever consider surgery? Only another four years of residency. I'll be sure to put in a good word for you. How does it feel to be a third year resident? You've gone far. Can't say I'm too surprised. I always knew you had what it takes to make it here. So don't screw it up now, make me look bad. Back to work. You made it to third year. But I wouldn't look so proud of yourself. Your performance was mediocre. I want to see a lot of improvement this next year. You'll be looking to repeat your third year at some rinky-dinky ER out in the boonies. Other than that, have a great rest of the day. Congratulations.
The Accreditation Council has shut down our residency program, and you can include yourself as one of the main causes. Pack your things. Do not pass go. Do not collect your last paycheck. From now on, the only reason I should see you walking these halls would be as a patient. And even then, I wouldn't recommend it. Goodbye, good luck, good riddance. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, gotta go. Bye-bye. Well, how does it feel to be top of the heap around here? You have done outstanding work, better than most residents in your group. And because of that, we'd like to offer you a position as attending in our emergency department. No, no, don't thank me. You deserve it. And you want to know the best part of all this? We'll be seeing a lot more of each other now that we're colleagues. Hey. Congratulations. I, uh, I heard you're signing on as an attending. We're pretty competitive around here, so consider yourself flattered and us honored. You're not going to get rich with a career in academic medicine, but you'll have some power. Power to help patients, inspire residents to achieve, you know, bolster morale, problem solve, and, and raise the stature of our beloved residency program. Eh. So what the pay sucks. I mean, look at me. I'm happy. I'm a happy, happy guy. Hey, you got that 50 I lent you last week. Uh, you wouldn't happen to have any cash on you, would you? I have some good news, I have some bad news. The good news is you have successfully graduated from our program. The bad news is you were not accepted for the attending job. Don't worry. I'm sure there are many, many positions available for you. I heard the Peace Corps is looking. They'll take just about anyone. Oh, uh, look, uh, about your application for attending, you were turned down. I'm sorry, I, I know how you must feel. Uh, this hospital is a pretty tough place to work in. You know, there are other facilities out there where your talents might be better utilized. You know, if it were completely up to me, I, oh, hell, I, I would have turned you down too. Your work wasn't up to our standards. You, you just weren't good enough. Good luck to you. You've just about completed your residency, right? Well, you've certainly come a long way. <laughs> Talk about green. Man, when you first started. Well, to be fair, you weren't as bad as some. Almost, but not quite. GSW to the chest. I'd start there if I were you. Just a little farewell present. I'm tired of making excuses for you. Your performance stinks! You're hurting all of us. Now get back to work. Hey, we got a big one coming in. It's your decision, but I think you should be there. Hey, listen. I don't like to play favorites, but I gotta tell you, you're impressing the hell out of me. Not to mention the rest of the nursing staff, and that's not an easy thing. I wish these medical schools would turn out more residents like you. We just got a drowning. Eight years old, under for about five minutes. You better hurry. We got a kid with a probable tension pneumo and one very angry soccer dad. I don't know which is worse. Wanna join us? Hey, listen, I don't like to play favorites, but I gotta tell you, you're impressing the hell out of me. Not to mention the rest of the nursing staff, and that's not an easy thing. I wish these medical schools would turn out more residents like you. Oh, I wanna talk to you about this Jehovah's Witness case, just giving you a heads up. Uh, there might be some repercussions. 
Don't look so surprised. I understand you had a hard decision to make. I mean, what, do you honor a set of beliefs or do you save a life? I don't have a clear-cut answer for you, morally, but legally, the pharaohs in their church have hired a lawyer. Now, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is they're not suing the hospital. The bad news is they're suing you for assault and violation of their son's civil rights. I mean, don't worry, this hospital will be there for you, you know, if you need them to find you a good lawyer. I want to talk to you about that uh, Jehovah's Witness case. It's a tough call, and I'm sorry you had to make it. I had this case in my third year. Young woman, unconscious following an assault. She was going to die unless we gave her blood. But uh, unfortunately, we found an advance directive in her wallet stating absolutely no blood products were to be given under any circumstances. And we couldn't contact her family, so I had to make the call, and we transfused her. She pulled through, but wasn't too happy when she learned what we did. She claimed that by giving the blood, we had damned her to hell for all eternity and got her expelled from her church. So a week later, we saw her again as a patient, suicide attempt. She succeeded. That idiot Gomez. He should have known better than to work with a cough like that. You know what happens if this test comes up positive? It means six months of medication. And don't forget your mask, you know, just in case you haven't already been infected. Well, so your b bizarro Mr. Mosley was an insecticide exposure, and the LAPD was convinced it was PCP. I'm glad you dug a little deeper. Just a word of caution about having the police involved in your case. They have a different agenda and that can get in the way of you doing your job. The officers have done their work. Now it's your turn. Don't be afraid to tell the cops to back off your patient. Yeah, the investigation can continue after you're finished. From past experience, I can tell you, uh, Officer Griffin is particularly annoying. He once refused to leave the trauma room because he wanted to get a confession from the dying banger we had on the table. Well, the guy died before he got his confession, and he blamed us for screwing up his case. You want a bite? Go on. Go on. Oh, hey, guess what? Colin Shukat, the suspected abused child, he has OI. It's osteogenesis imperfecta, a genetic disorder that causes bones to break easily, often for little or no apparent cause. Matthew, we need you in two. Not urgent. Thanks. See, a person with OI may get anywhere from a few to as many as like, several hundred fractures in a lifetime. It's, it's often mistaken for child abuse because it usually goes undiagnosed. You know, the child is written off as accident prone. They also need you in one. OK, I, you know, I'll be right there. See, that's why Colin's folks were so jumpy. They go from hospital to hospital with his kid's endless number of broken bones, and they're terrified the doctors will accuse him of abusing their kid, which is just what you did. And the chief needs to see you in her office just as soon as you get done here. Julia, why don't you just tell me all this at once? Well, that wouldn't be any fun now, would it? So, anyway. This case is what I call a mega zebra. It's one that's nearly impossible to diagnose in an ER, so uh, you're off the hook this time. You want a pretzel? No? I'm on a personal slowdown. I am so sick of administration coming down here and telling us how to take care of patients 
Most of them haven't worked the floor in years. I've been trying to talk the other nurses into getting unionized. Oh, forget about it. Bunch of scaredy cats. Sure you don't want one? Suit yourself. My little darlings, pick up the phone. It's Mama. Oof. Pick it up, darlings. What are you doing over there? I, do I hear fighting? Oof. Stop that. Now you stop that. When I get home. The guy who was robbed, the one in treatment room one, sells jewelry. Oh, don't worry, I got his permission to look. This must be his costume collection. Robbers weren't interested in this stuff. Can't afford real jewelry anyway, not on my salary. Bet if I tell him what I take home a week, he'd feel sorry for me. Give me a discount. What do you think? I copy, yes. ETA? Roger. Incoming NBC, family of three, multiple trauma. Let's make room for him, people. I hope you're rested, because I have a hunch this is your big chance to show the powers that be that you have what it takes. There's a girl in three who tried to kill herself. I've been seeing a lot of that lately. I don't know. How do you give up hope at 15 years old? You haven't done anything yet. I'm so glad I don't have kids. Huh. Just four Pomeranians, always happy. <laughs>